Hey everybody, welcome to Cityscape Brewing. I'm Dennis Fields, and have you ever wanted to take your beer on tap somewhere else? Maybe it's to an event like a homebrew festival. Maybe it's to a birthday party. Maybe it's for somebody's wedding or anniversary or engagement party or some kid's bar mitzvah, if that's what you want to do. Well, there's an easy way to do that. You can make yourself a jockey box. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. After you hit that like and subscribe button, grab yourself a beer and we'll get after it. So essentially your jockey box is a cooler that's gonna help you cool your beer down that's in your keg before it gets to the tap, right? And so it is a cooler that is emptied. You have some space inside for ice. It's gonna help your beer run through some lines that are in there and come out cold when you're serving it to friends and family. So the jockey box I'm gonna to make today is gonna to have four taps on the front, but you can make it as little as having one tap or two taps, etc. I'm gonna have all of the information that you're gonna need in the video description below as far as each of the pieces of equipment and each of the items that you're gonna to need to build this. Uh, assuming you want a one, two, three, four, you would just double those amounts that I'm gonna have in the video description below. So we're gonna get started. First things first, you're gonna need some extra shanks this is the uh, shank that would go through like a kegerator wall or your keyser, or in this case is going to go through the wall of our cooler. You're also going to need some taps. These taps, uh, regular tap handles or faucets that you're going to need to be able to screw onto the front of these to be able to serve them. You're also going to need some CO2 line and you're going to need some beer serving line. Those things we will talk about and the amounts that you need in a moment. But the biggest thing you're gonna need is a cooler. So you could use an existing one that you have, or I purchased one like this one. This is like an igloo style. It's a 50 quart, I believe. This one's 48 quart, 50 quart. This one here is large enough to have four taps on the front of it. This is actually the back, but it's back or front. And then uh, we have plenty of space inside for the cooling of our lines that we're gonna need when we put ice in this thing. I bought this one for about 25 bucks. Um, you can get these online, you can get them at your regular local stores, um, but you know, cheaper the better. We're really just using this thing for the day. You can fill it up with ice. It doesn't need to be anything extravagant and you're gonna be drilling holes in it. So it's not something you're gonna wanna use for just a regular cooler um, outside of this build. So, so we're gonna go through the full build process. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to uh, put on each of the pieces of equipment, how I would do it, and then some optional things that you wanna maybe do uh, as you're building yours, but that's up to you. So without, without further ado, let's get after it. All right, so we have our cooler here and there's kind of two sides, a front and a back. So this is the front, you know, it has the name on it and then this is the back. I'm actually gonna opt to put the taps on the back. And that's because this area right here has a perfectly nice square box where I could drill four taps right on the front of this where they could screw in evenly and it actually looks kind of nice like they should be in there. It also allows me to open this up without disturbing the taps and pour in ice when I need to while not hitting any of the tap handles, that kind of thing on the front. So I'll have the beer lines coming actually out of the front of this one and the taps coming out of the back. And so um, this just gives a kind of a clean look, but you can do this on the side, you can do it on the front. It really doesn't matter uh, where you wanna do it. First things first, the inside of this is just like any other cooler, but I would suggest getting something with some fairly thin walls inside, right? This one doesn't have some very thick walls and uh, you're going to need, depending on the, sh the length of your, sh your shanks, you're going to need some room to kind of squeeze this in between there. In this case, I have some longer shanks, but some shanks come a little bit smaller. And so you want to make sure you have a long enough uh, piece that can go through the sidewall of whatever cooler that you're going to be using. And we're also going to need to measure the diameter of these shanks. And I'll have all of the measurements and everything listed in the video description, so you don't need to write any of this down. But we're going to go ahead, we're going to measure those, we're going to put you know, those circles lay them out on the front evenly, and then we're going to drill our holes. So we're gonna do that part next, and then we're gonna talk about uh, all of the hoses and equipment that would go inside. All right, so we have our cooler laid out here, and I wanna figure out kind of where on this band that I wanna put our, our tap handles. And so I, I was thinking about just, you know, kind of putting these things in here and seeing where this handle may hit the lid when it opens. However, this isn't going to be our restriction, is not this, it's really the collar 
of our uh, shank, right? And so this is gonna be a bit, little bit larger than these, so I can't go all the way down or this, uh, sh this collar is going to hit this little lip uh, around the border of this little indentation here. So if you have a flat area here, um, you can do that. If you wanna put them lower, you can do that. I like to have my taps up a little bit. That way you can put like a spill cup or something underneath them as they're sitting on a table. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take actually off this collar part I'm gonna use that kind of as a template for about how high I need to be, right? And so if I, if I know I don't wanna put it here, I'm gonna have some funky gap or, or void there. And so I wanna put it up at least so this is here. So I know where my height of my tap handles are gonna be based on this collar. Also, I'm going to be kind of measuring side to side and, and uh, I know I can only go you know this far with the one, and another one over here, and then I'm going to average those distances and make sure that they're evenly spaced out in the middle. That's gonna do, be good for two reasons. Not only do you not wanna pack everything over here because everything in the cooler is gonna need to have room individually for each of the coils of line that is ultimately gonna be inside of this thing to cool down the beard. So I'm gonna go ahead and outline these things and then we're gonna go ahead and drill the holes. I'm gonna be using a one inch drill bit that looks like this. It's a whole drill bit. It has a uh, drill bit like this on the, on the front, kind of as a pilot, and then you drill in the one inch hole. I'm not gonna drill all the way through because I want this little hole to be kind of a pilot for the inside also. So as I get all the way through with this part of it, I'm going to stop, I'm gonna go from the inside, I'm gonna drill the one inch from the opposite side. That way it's nice and clean and I'm not pushing all the way through and bending the plastic on the inside. Now remember, this is going to be a little pilot hole. So you wanna go slow, and then you wanna make sure that you're drilling straight through, but not all the way through the, the cooler. Uh, we're gonna go from the inside as well. So what that looks like, there is foam on the inside. So after you kind of break through the first part of the cooler, I, you can see I got all the way through to the uh, inner port and that's exactly where I want to be. That is going to act as kind of a template. All right, so we're going to find our pilot hole that we went through the inner wall here and we're going to do the same thing from the inside. Once that's through, you should have a hole all the way through your cooler like that. I'm going to go ahead and drill out the other three and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so we have our four holes here. They're, again, one inch uh, in diameter. I did kind of use some sandpaper around the edge just to kind of clean up the little fibers that, from uh, drilling them there. Uh, but you can go ahead and now start assembling your shanks. And so in this case, we would take off our little bottom collar here that goes on the inside. And we're gonna put all these things through. Now we're done with that, we're gonna go on the inside and tighten up the nuts. Again, we're just getting them snug. You don't need to tighten these down too much because it's just a cooler, the foam in between there, so we're not really wrenching them down. We're just keeping them in place. And again, this is a temporary one day uh, serving machine. So uh, you don't really need to have it, you know, like you would your kegerator where it's perfectly tight and secure because uh, you're not gonna be cooling it 24 seven and wasting any energy. This is another thing I didn't notice when I was drilling them that you should pay attention to when you're making one of these. These have some little ribs on the inside here and just, just so happens that I avoided them by spacing them out evenly, but I could have hit one right in between and then it would have been a little weird because I would have had you know, my nut half off of one of these and it just so happens where I measured, um, it's perfectly uh, on one of these without hitting the kind of little you know, ridge here in the inside. So um, make sure you're do looking at that when you're drilling to see if there's any, you know, weird angles or, you know, rivs, rivets like this uh, in the inside of your uh, cooler so you can avoid those. 
All right, so we have our shanks in place. They're all spaced out perfectly. We're ready to put our tap handles on when we get all done. Uh, what is happening on the inside of this? So really what we're trying to do is create a coil of hose that goes to each one of these taps that where we can pour ice on the top of this, it will cool those hoses down. Now, optionally, there are people who, or you can buy a fairly expensive version of this where they have uh, copper or even metal um, stainless steel tubing on the inside. You don't have to do that. It's a lot cheaper to have your keg sitting in a bucket with some ice in it to keep it fairly cold and then just making sure that the line is always cold, uh, having ice through this. You do not need to have stainless steel or copper uh, on the inside of this unless you're trying to have your keg sit out at room temperature and then cool your beer before they uh, get it in their glass. All right, the next thing we need to do is actually get it so our hose can come from the inside and go outside or vice versa. And so we need to be able to have holes on this side in order for our uh, keg lines to come inside of the, the uh, jockey box. And so what I'm gonna do is drill, these are half inch size diameter holes or a hose. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill with my half inch drill bit uh, holes on the back. Again, these don't need to be as you know pretty and lined up. This is just going to wherever your kegs are sitting, but I would also suggest doing it on the top of this cooler so the uh, liquid doesn't come out. If you're trying to drill them down here, you may have water, ice water, or anything else that tries to come through those holes. If they're up here, you'd have to have a lot of ice in there before uh, you would get into the holes. So I'm going to go ahead and start drilling these out. All right, so you can see we have our four holes drilled here. This is for our lines to come either out or in, however you want, uh, through these holes. So you're gonna push this thing through here. It's actually a pretty snug fit. It does allow for it to slide back and forth, but it's really not gonna let any of the cold from the, the cooler out. So a half inch is about perfect for those. All right, so we have our faucets on, our shanks in. We have our holes drilled in the back for the holes that will have the tubing coming out. Let's specifically talk a little about the tubing itself. So there is standard tubing that you'll probably use inside of a kegerator or a keezer, which is a little more rigid, a little more uh, uh, hard. It's got a thicker outer, outer side of it. And it's meant so it doesn't kink or really uh, get pinched in any way, shape or form uh, to stop the flow of the beer. And so this is kind of expensive stuff. And if you have some, you can definitely use it. But one trick, especially for cooling your beer down in one of these jockey boxes is to use a smaller diameter tubing. And I'm not saying inside diameter, I'm saying outside diameter. So these two um, are a lot different in thickness. They're also easier to bend. So this one you can buy at like a Lowe's or Home Depot or any hardware store. I'll have links again to all this stuff in the description so you can just get it delivered to your doorstep. But this stuff is a lot more rigid. It also takes a lot more longer for this thicker stuff to cool down inside of a jockey box when it has ice or ice water in it, where this stuff doesn't. So uh, as long as you're not putting a lot of pressure on this one, which is just serving pressure, um, then you, you shouldn't really have to worry about it. This actually does have a working pressure that has around 50 PSI or something like that. And so you can still use this. We're only gonna be using 10 to 12 uh, for beer serving pressure. This stuff is much more rigid, although it can handle a lot more PSI. It also takes a little longer to cool down because the wa walls of this are thicker. So what I'm gonna do is kind of use a combination of both. I'm gonna use the thinner stuff as I'm coming from my shank on the inside. I'm going to actually tie these together with a hose barb like this one. You can use nylon, that's not a big deal as long as it's not too thin. You can also use stainless steel or brass, that kind of thing. Um, again, we're not gonna be using this thing all the time. And so, although uh, we're gonna try and prevent any crimping of the smaller line by, by zip tying these in nice coils on the inside, they'll also help uh, get the ice water around them and kind of stay together uh, in their own respective spots on the inside of the jockey box. But this stuff, we're actually gonna to tie to it. So when we put it through the back holes and it's coming out and going to our keg, it actually preserves a little bit of the coolness uh, from the keg where it's gonna be sitting in a bucket of ice water potentially uh, to that. And plus it's also less likely to get bent or crimped or hit or nicked and that kind of stuff. And so I'm kind of using a combination of both. You could get away with doing all of one or the other, but this stuff, the thinner stuff is a lot cheaper. I bought like 20 feet of this for, you know, what you could only get about maybe five or 10 feet of this thicker stuff. So I'm gonna use both of them in mine 
Um, feel free to use whichever hose you have, um, but I feel the smaller diameter stuff helps the beer cool down faster, and that's the whole point of this jockey box. So let's get started. I'm gonna open this thing up. Um, one tip is grab yourself a cup of warm water. I have mine in my Cityscape brewing mug. Um, and then you can soak the ends of your tubing in that hot water. That's gonna help you push on those hose barbs, both on our, our shanks that are inside of here, our connections that we're gonna be made. And ultimately, once we get done uh, making these connections out, once it comes out, you're gonna push it on this hose barb as well. On all of our connections, and then we'll do the gas after that, but on all of our connections, we're gonna be using uh, hose clamps. And that's super important because we don't want our beer leaking out or our CO2 leaking out. So the CO2 side is more important, but I like to use hose clamps on everything. That's why it's just all set and done and I don't have to worry about it later. So go ahead and grab yourself a whole bunch of these again. I'll have a link in the description for all of this stuff. All right, let's start by getting our hoses together. So I'm gonna take one of my smaller one. This is about 10 feet of kind of the smaller diameter tubing. Uh, it is 3 16 in the inside for both. This one I think is 5 16 on the outside and then this one is larger. I can't remember exactly what it is, but I'll have that in the link description. I'm gonna join these two together using this 3 16 hose barb here. In this case, I'm just using a brass one. You can use whichever uh, you have. If you have nylon, if you have stainless steel, that's fine. I'm gonna soak each of these ends here in the hot water to loosen it up. Just a few seconds. And then I'm gonna push on this hose barb. I'm gonna do the same thing with my larger one. You may need to soak this a little bit more just because of how much more rigid the line is. Do the same thing. You want to make sure you go ahead and put these hose bar uh, or hose clamps on first so you can get at them easily and then once your hose is warm uh, from the hot water go ahead and squeeze on the other side these should be pretty tight you may not need hose clamps for all of it um, if you have a limited one i would really really strongly recommend using them for all of them but if you don't have them um, you can definitely just use it for the gas side and then check your system afterwards so that's what the hose barb should look like. I'm gonna push those together so they're actually touching. So on the inside of this, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my thinner one and I'm gonna attach that thinner side to the shaft that we have on the inside. So our shank that we have coming through the inside of the cooler. Heat that up again. I'm gonna put on our hose clamp and I'm gonna push that on inside here. And again, this is a little thinner line, so that's okay. But we're gonna push that on carefully so we're not crimping it as best we can. Then we're gonna go ahead and tighten these down. Next thing we're gonna do after that is take some zip ties and we're gonna use that to coil all of this tubing up very nicely in a nice coil. We're gonna need to leave about five feet or so that's not in the zip tied part coming out so it can go through the back hole here and then eventually reach our keg. So our keg may not be sitting directly behind this thing. We may need it to have a few feet away. So we wanna be able to pull that hose to our keg at least five feet and then hose or, uh, zip tie the rest of it down inside of the cooler. Let me go ahead and clip off the ends of these. We're gonna lay that down on the bottom, nice and flat. All right, so here's what it looks like complete. You've got your coil down at the bottom with your zip ties. You've got your line hooked up to your shank here, and then you have a little bit left over to pull to your keg. When you're not using it, you then can pull this hose back inside all the way and your hoses sit like this on the outside. So these little uh, ends now just stick out so they don't have to uh, sit very far away. You don't have hoses hanging out, dragging all over the ground. These can kind of pull easily back in and out. That's why one reason why I like the holes rather than using like barbed ends on either side of the outside is so I can pull these things out, use them for my keg, push them back in and store this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these other four hooked up after that, we'll go through the gas line and hooking that up to CO2.
All right, and here we go. So we have all of our coils in here. We have them all hooked up to our shanks. We all run them out the back. We've got our extra couple of feet that uh, lead to our quick connect for our ball lock uh, kegs. And so the, this is ready to go. Next, we're gonna get our uh, red gas line and we're gonna show you how to connect those. So this is all ready to go. This connects to one of your sides of your keg. We're gonna throw ice and a little bit of water in the bottom to get that started, but ice mostly, uh, that will help cool these lines down. So this portion is all wrapped up. Let's get to the gas. All right, let's talk a little bit about what you're gonna need on the gas side. So you're gonna need a CO2 tank and a regulator, of course, and you're gonna have to have uh, a hose nipple that's gonna come to a CO2 tank. So you might already have this for your normal serving setup, uh, but I use a secondary one since I use a 20 pound tank. I use a secondary one for uh, any type of accessories like this jockey box. So I'll have this all set up and we're gonna put this off to the side. This will be the last thing that we hook up. All right, in addition to the CO2 tank and regulator, you're gonna need some hose. I'm gonna use about 15 feet or so of this, um, maybe 20, uh, depending on how far away you wanna keep your regulator. We're also gonna need to split off into as many kegs that you have set up. So in our case, we have four. I'm gonna need to split this four different ways. So coming from our CO2 regulator, I'm gonna have one hose that's you know probably four to five feet long that's coming into this th uh, four-way splitter. So this is a three-eight barb four-way splitter. This only has three outs though, so we can only do three kegs if we only use this. So we're gonna create a little connection over to this other splitter here, which is like a T splitter. We're gonna use this then to connect and then we're gonna, when these hoses are connected here, we're gonna have our one, two, three, four connections that go to our uh, kegs themselves to carve them up. Okay, so that's how we're gonna set that up. So I'll just have a small jumper line that goes in between these two here. And then I'm gonna have this one goes to our, our CO2 regulator and then the others that will go to the kegs. And then also you'll have to have your quick connects. In this case, I'm using ones that have a uh, screw lock or screw on version. This again is the 3 8 barb that goes on here. And then of course, you're gonna need some more hose clamps here and so that'll keep all of our co2 from leaking out but once we hook this all up we'll hook it up and uh, test those connections just to make sure uh, i usually just spray it with some star sand and i'm looking for bubbles after i spray it with our star sand so we're going to go ahead get this thing all hooked up and i'm going to show you what that looks like all right let's show you where i'm at here so i have my co2 tank i have my line connected to that this line then heads all the way over to my four-way splitter i have this split off i've got all my uh uh, hose clamps on here. Uh, these two will go to two of the kegs that are coming over here. I don't have those quick connects on because I accidentally ran out of the hose clamps. So I'm gonna actually wait to put these on and then hose clamp those on. This jumper line goes in between this one to that two-way splitter over here. And then I have the two extra hoses that will go to the two other uh, kegs over here. And so this one, one, two, three, four kegs. I ended up making my line that goes to my CO2 tank about five feet long. And then each one of these hoses is about four feet long. And it may seem like a little bit of overkill, but I'd rather have a little too much line than not enough because sometimes you're gonna need a little bit of space in between each one of the kegs. And so they're not gonna need, they're not gonna necessarily be right next to each other. You're gonna have them in buckets and those buckets in ice. And then the, uh, uh, they'll, they're not gonna be touching one another. And so giving yourself a little extra room with the CO2 uh, cords is actually gonna be helpful. You can move this out of the way so nobody kicks and knocks it down and it hits your regulator or something like that. I used about, I would say 25 feet total. I had an extra five feet here, but I bought 20 extra feet, which is for the, the jumper line and the four connections to the kegs. All right, guys, before you get to use this thing, make sure that you run some PBW or some OxyClean through the line, some line cleaner, um, and then also uh, fill them with star sand when you're not using them. I do that while I'm cleaning a keg generally is what I'll do is I'll uh, put the cleaner in the keg, I'll hook it up, I'll run the uh, cleaner through each of the lines, let them sit for about 10, 15 minutes, then run the star sand after it and flush those lines real good of the cleaner. And then I let it actually sit and store with star sand in the lines. 
and that will help prevent any uh, mildewing and anything like that uh, from getting in any of the lines. And then you'll want to, before you use it, make sure that you clean all of your faucets and stuff, especially if they've been sitting for a long time. You can though, after you put star sand and clean them all, you can go ahead and add these caps like these black caps that I put on my regular kegerator and you can put them right up uh, to help keep critters, spiders, other thing, if you keep it in your garage, that kind of thing, out of the, um, of the faucets themselves. And so that's an easy way to store this thing and then it's ready to go for the next time that you need to use it. As always, I will have everything you need for this build in the video description below. So all the equipment, hoses, CO2, hose clamps, everything you need, is gonna be listed down uh, in the video description, so check that out. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask them away in the comments section. It's always awesome to bring your homebrew and share it with other people at events. So that's gonna do it for this video. Hope you guys learned a lot. As always, hit that like and subscribe button, helps the channel out a lot. Happy brewing and cheers. Thanks for watching my video. I really do appreciate it. Another couple ways that you can help support the channel is by hitting that like and subscribe button. You can also check out the merchandise in our store. I have other shirts. We got glassware, we got stickers, hats, sweatshirts, etc. Go check it out. Also, hit that video here. You know you want to.